Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this film, I'd like to show you a little bit about lofts. Lofts uh, allow you to take uh, you know, for a different uh, enclosed geometry from one profile to another and kind of draw perhaps a, uh, a shape that would connect all this. But the thing about lofts are is that they're very, uh, they could be very organic, uh, you know, very free-flowing, and there's a lot of options associated with it, and a lot of shape, shapes you can get out of a loft. And uh, sometimes it may not be necessarily the shape that you want, and if you want something that's a little bit more fluid and artistic, uh, a loft, uh, loft is a really great tool to use. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more precise, you're going to have to use uh, probably some guide curves in order to get it uh, you know, to look correct. But uh, I will show you some of these options as we go along. So we're going to draw a, um, or a sketch or model a simple uh, peg-like structure. We're going to start with a rectangular profile on the bottom, and then move up to a couple circular profiles on top of that. So we'll start with the top plane. Uh, go to sketch, we'll go to center rectangle. And we'll make that about maybe 20 millimeters by uh, 30 millimeters. And we're going to rebuild that. So the thing about lofts, you want to make sure you have uh, three uh, elements of enclosed geometry and three different planes. So we're going to take our top layer, we're going to copy that up. Maybe make that about 20 millimeters away. Go to the green check mark as well. While, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and sketch right on it. So we'll click on a sketch one. Uh, draw a circle out there. We'll go normal to it. I can have that as a, as a shortcut key. Make that 18 uh, millimeters. We'll go ahead and rebuild that. And we'll go back to our top plane and do the very same thing. This time we'll make it about 40 or 45 millimeters away. So we'll make that about 45. Green check mark. And we'll put a circle on top of that, maybe just a little bit less than, uh, than the previous circle. Maybe about uh, 14 degrees, or 14 uh, millimeters, perhaps. So let's go ahead and go normal to it, just to make sure that looks right. That looks fine to me. Okay, so let's go ahead and rebuild this. Think about the lofts. You want to make sure you have uh, at least uh, two different profiles. I have three here of enclosed geometry and uh, different planes, and we're going to go uh, create a solid body uh, between those. So the way you do it, very simply, you need to make sure that you're out of all the sketch elements, so that they're all independent, and you're not editing any of them. Go to the loft of boss space. A couple of ways you can do this, you can go to the feature flyout and select them that way. Sketch 1, sketch 2, sketch 3. And it puts that together there. Or you can select it uh, by way of going into uh, uh, your user interface. What it tries to do when you first put uh, a loft together is it tries to put these uh, pull points together. These pull points give you the opportunity to actually make a little bit more of a natural design. Perhaps put a spiral in our loft, as you see there. It gives you kind of a preview there. And if you go to the green check mark, it kind of gives you that value. So, initially when we put a loft together, if you go to the evaluation of that and go to the mass properties, it should be uh, right down the middle. So we'll go up to four units after the decimal. We'll change a little bit on the x-axis. The z-axis will uh, change a little bit there too, but only, only slightly. If you just go to the default settings when you put your arc together in something that's simple like this, you still will have your uh, center of mass right there in the middle. But the more you fuss with it, the more you fuss with it, uh, the more changes are going to are going to occur, and the uh, the less accurate it's going to be if you want to try to get something that's more lined up with the with the center of mass. So there's something that's really kind of a uh, kind of different. If we go to the center of mass, or go to our mass property and see what the center of mass is, it has changed quite a bit. So, um, uh, both all values have changed, but the most notable ones are the x and z axes. It's really kind of moved off of that. So, how do you control that a little bit better? One way to control the shape of this is uh, through guide curves. So, if we go back to the loft, and I'd have to, uh, I'm going I'm to need to delete my loft in order to do this. We're going to go ahead and put some guide curves in here. We're going to put a guide curve on the left and a guide curve on the right. So if we go to my right plane and go to sketch, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out a simple arc. What I want to do is I want to take that arc and uh, kind of, and you need to make sure that with your guide curves that all the elements of the guide curve intersect the, the profiles of, um, of what you've drawn for the loft so far. So with these two elements, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that pierced. With a rectangle on the bottom, I'm going to pierce that too. And then this one, you have, still need to make sure that it uh, connects with plane number one. At the very least, you need to make sure that the top and bottom profiles are connected. But uh, to be correct here, you need to probably do the middle one too. 
So the way I do this is I put a point on the arc and then I click on the circle there, that second profile, and I'll make that pierce too. By doing that, it makes it fully defined. And then we're going to go ahead and rebuild. So this is going to be my guide left. Then we're going to do a guide right, so I'm going to go back to the right plane, and also do a guide curve on that. So an arc, we're going to make a pierce relationship with the circle on top, take the end point of that line, make a pierce relationship with that on the bottom. Let's see if we can move that out a little bit, so it doesn't uh, get really distorted. And we'll put that point in here too, and we'll make that point and that uh, circle, and we do a pierce relationship on that too. So uh, this is uh, the top of our guide left, this is going to be guide right. That was in pretty good shape. So let's go and rebuild this, go back to our features. Now we have uh, two indi or three independent profiles, two independent uh, guide curves. Now we can put our loft together. So our profiles, sketch one sketch 3, sketch 2, and just for the fun of that, what I did is I reversed the order, so it goes from 1 to 2, I'm sorry, it goes from uh, sketch number 1, sketch number 3, and then back down to 2. It's not going to resolve my, uh, my, my loft here. It just doesn't like that. But we can change that. We can take our sketch 2 with these, uh, with these arrows in here and actually change the order, and once we do that, then it should be in pretty good shape. It should give us our, uh, our preview. Let's go and clear our selections to start over again. So sketch one, sketch two, and then sketch three. If we want to change the order, we can do that. There it goes, now it comes back. And it looks like our uh, pull points are uh, back in line too. So let's go ahead and check our uh, mass properties. So our mass is right down the middle. And of course, if we went back to our loft like we did last time and moved some of these pull points around, then things get a little bit more distorted and our center mass is going to be off a little bit. That may be good. Again, if you want to have a, a natural organic look to it, that may be fine. That may be your purposes, but if you want to go ahead and define this a little bit better, this is where the, the guide curves are going to come in. So we're going to go back to our loft, and we're going to go down our guide curves. We're going to do a guide left, and a guide curve right, and that should line up our pull points. It may not do that exactly, but if we go back to our mass properties, now it is off a little bit there. Let's go back into our loft and maybe take a look at some of those other settings. So, with these other settings, uh, you might want to, uh, if you, I, I've learned that if you do uh, close your loft and unclose it, it goes ahead and uh, lines up those pull points again. So if we go back to mass properties, it does set that back to zero. If we go back to our loft three, which is our third loft that we've drawn here. We can go uh, check out some of these other settings too. So now that we have this thing lined up right in the middle, we can uh, explore some of these other settings here too. So start and constraints, we could have none down here, so it kind of follows uh, the natural guide curve that we have in there. We could put in a direction vector if we had another line in here that we wanted it to follow. When it leaves that, we can do that too. Or we could do normal to profile. And what that is going to do is it's going to initially come out at 90 degrees and then begin to curve. And you can influence that profile by pulling up on those magenta arrows and it'll give you, just like a spline in a way, it gives you more influence as you go through. So that's our, and that's our start constraint, so our end constraint we can also make that normal to profile too. So now it'll start at 90 degrees and then it'll begin to curve out from that. So that kind of gives you a little bit different shape. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of options with lofts. But uh, guide curves really help uh, guide it. They really help uh, kind of define the shape a little bit better. If you want to uh, construct uh, you know, specific values in here, you can put that in here too. And then check uh, check off uh, some of these other uh, elements in here too, if you like, in order to get a uh, different view. So go to the green check mark again. Let's go ahead and check our mass properties. It should still be down in the middle. And uh, again, one more time, if you want to go ahead and constrain that really close to the, the guide curves, if you go into uh, edit the feature down here, and you want to close the loft, and then unclose it after that, it does reset everything. 
there's probably different ways of doing that too so that's a uh, loft in a nutshell and a simple uh, design we will see you in class